we're gonna start cooking a meal. We're cooking some lunch today. So let's get started. We have some brown rice wine vinegar, red wine vinegar. We're going to add a little bit of water, sugar, and salt. Ensure that your onions are in a jar like this or a bowl. I would consider this to be a quick pickle and I wanna get it ready so I can get these pickled red onions out at room temperature for about 15 minutes and then refrigerate it. Let's drop this on our 18,000 BTU burner right on the center to get this boiling real fast. While we're waiting for our pickle solution to come to a boil, we're gonna go ahead and start on our polenta. To start on our polenta, what we're gonna do first is we're gonna grab some butter we're gonna drop it on our right burner. What you wanna do is you wanna saute your shallots, your garlic, and your ginger in that butter for about 45 seconds or so on medium heat. But just make sure that you don't brown this too much. After 35 or 45 seconds, we're going to add our coconut milk. Let's add our stock. We're gonna add our polenta. Once you have your polenta in your pan, what you wanna do is whisk it in there. And you're gonna continuously whisk this on medium high. And we're gonna bring this to a boil. Once it comes to a boil, we're gonna leave it on medium high for three minutes. Now I am using instant polenta, which means I can cook this in maybe less than 10 minutes. If you're using regular polenta, what you wanna do is you wanna add about 12 minutes of time to that. It's gonna take about 20, uh, to 30 minutes to cook regular polenta. We're gonna grab our pickling solution, pour it right into our red onions. And we're gonna give them a quick little mix here. I'm gonna leave these in our jar here with our pickling solution. And occasionally, I'm gonna go in there and move it around. Once your pickled red onions have sat at room temperature for about 15 minutes, it's time for these bad boys to go into your refrigerator. Uh, refrigerate them up to about maybe three, two to three hours uh, or until they're completely chilled down. After three minutes, we're gonna go ahead and put this down to medium low. And we're gonna continue to stir this or uh, whisk this for another five minutes. After five minutes of cooking this on medium low, what we wanna do is add our herbage now. Let's add our mint, our cilantro, and our Thai basil. If you can't find Thai basil, that's fine. You can use regular basil here as well. And now we're gonna turn off the heat and we're gonna fold in. You can whip in these herbs in there. Now that our polenta has been mixed with our herbs, what we wanna do is put it into a shallow pan. Once it's in the shallow pan, you wanna leave it out at room temperature for about 15 minutes and then drop it in the refrigerator until it's completely chilled. When you're dropping it into your shallow pan, make sure that you use your spatula to flatten it out so you can have a nice even surface. Now I'm just going to even out our polenta. After 15 minutes of sitting time at room temperature, we're gonna drop our polenta into a refrigerator until it's completely chilled off. Next thing we're going to do now is on our right 9,100 BTU burner, our top right, we're gonna go ahead and make our curry carrot puree. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop about a pound of carrots, sliced, maybe about quarter inch thick. We're going to add four cups of water to this. We're gonna add our curry powder in there. We have sambal here, but if you have something like sriracha, you can add it to it here as well. We're gonna turn our burner up to high. We're gonna bring this to a boil. Once it comes to a boil, we're gonna let it boil for 10 minutes. While we're waiting for our carrots to come to a boil, we're going to start our caramelized garlic. And to do that, we're using the upper 9,100 BTU star burner. And we're gonna bring that to medium heat. We are going to be using some coconut oil. Drop in there, and I'm gonna wait for that to melt. We wanna add our garlic cloves in there. We're gonna saute these on medium heat for about five minutes. Uh, and we're gonna brown them pretty much on all sides. And if it happens to have three sides, you can also uh, brown off that second size on them if you'd like, but that's optional. Uh, once they get browned off beautifully on both sides, we're gonna turn off the heat, nice and golden brown all the way through. I'm going to remove some of this oil out. 
And I do have a couple of pieces of garlic right in the center uh, that I'm gonna wipe down with the towel. We're gonna add our garlic back in. We're going to add our liquid. And we're gonna add our honey as well. Ensure that you go in there and you give it a quick little mix with a small um, whisk or a spoon if you have one, just to make sure that that honey gets distributed all the way through. What you're doing with this caramelized garlic right now is you're evaporating all of its liquid until it becomes one with the garlic. Now we have our carrots on here and it came to a boil. We're gonna boil them for another 10 minutes. And after 10 minutes on medium high, we're gonna turn this down to medium and boil it for another five to 10 minutes or until all that liquid is evaporated. Our polenta cake has completely chilled out. What you wanna do is you wanna grab a knife and maybe a spatula of some sort and ensure you cut the sides to loosen up the edges. Then you're gonna use your spatula. Gonna drop it right on there. Now it's time to cut our polenta cakes. And for presentation purposes as well, I'm using three different sizes per portion. Now that we've cut our polenta cakes into our desired shapes, we're gonna go ahead and uh, put this back in the refrigerator or if you're ready to cook them on your uh, cooktop on a saute pan, this is the time to actually start searing them if you'd like. And you wanna leave them on there until your carrots are spoon or fork tender uh, or until most of that liquid is completely evaporated. And it's okay to have a little liquid in there as well uh, because you're gonna need that for uh, the puree. We're gonna drop these in our blender. However, you can do this a few different ways. If you don't have a blender, that's okay. You can always use a ricer or a regular potato masher. But for now, we're gonna drop these in our blender. We're gonna put them on high for about two minutes with a little bit of cream. We're gonna drop our cream right in there. We're gonna add our lemon juice in there and we're gonna add our butter in there right now. We're gonna put this uh, on our blender, we're gonna puree it, and then put it back in its pan. Once you've pureed your carrots, uh, and you have all your butter and cream and lemon juice in there, uh, it's ready to go. I want you to see how silky that is. And that is rich and creamy. We're gonna leave our carrot puree off the heat on our burner on the right-hand side, the right top side, and we're gonna start working on our poached lobster. We're gonna go ahead and get started with our water. Once our water comes to a boil, we're gonna turn this down to extra low five. And we're gonna start adding our butter in there, nice and slow. You don't wanna drop the whole thing in there uh, because it won't melt properly or it won't emulsify properly. Um, you can start adding more once you're halfway through. And what happens is that at 160 to 190 degrees, that's the temperature you wanna keep this butter at because that temperature is going to allow the butter and the milk solids to completely emulsify together to create one rich butter sauce. It would be a little bit harder for me to do this on a regular gas cooktop that doesn't have an extra low select function. Once your butter has emulsified and melted, what you wanna do is you wanna add your garlic to that. You wanna add your kosher salt. And now we're gonna add some Thai basil. If you wanna add more flavor, more ginger uh, flavor to this, you can add a little bit of uh, chopped ginger in there. Our butter emulsification is complete. Now we have our salt, our Thai basil, and our garlic clove in there. We're gonna wait for this to come up to about 160 to 190 degrees. So you're gonna need a thermometer to ensure that's at that temperature. Once it's at 160 to 190, we're gonna drop our lobster uh, tails in there. And we're gonna leave them in there for about maybe seven to 12 minutes or until the internal temperature of your lobster is 140 degrees. We're gonna leave our lobster in there uh, for about maybe seven or 12 minutes until internal temperature is 140. While the lobster's working, we're gonna work on our polenta cakes. And to start that off, we're gonna start off on the right hand, bottom right hand side, on our 9,100 BTU star burner. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and turn this on to medium high. We're gonna add a little bit of grapeseed oil. We're going to drop our polenta cakes in there and cook each side. It's going to take about two to three minutes per side 
or until they're golden brown on both sides. Our polenta cakes have actually browned on one side. We're gonna go ahead and give them a little flip. That's the color you're looking for right there. And we're gonna go ahead and start sauteing our asparagus. And what you wanna do is you wanna start off on high heat. And I do want our asparagus to flash on high heat with a quick saute. It's not going to be longer than a minute and a half or two. It's gonna be real quick, real fast. Because you want them to have some texture. You don't want them to be completely uh, overcooked or soft. So you wanna flash them on high. At this point, I know that we're really close with our lobster. I checked their internal temperature about maybe five minutes ago and they were about at 130 degrees. So once these are done, those lobsters should be at 140. And if I wanna keep them at that temperature, I'll turn this down to the extra low, lowest function, which is the level one. And we can keep them warm without breaking our delicate sauce. Once you get a little browning, not a lot, just a little bit of browning, that's exactly what you want right there. We're gonna turn off the heat off the burner and we're gonna check our lobster here in a second. To keep our asparagus from overcooking, I will remove them off the gas cooktop. So at this point, we're gonna go ahead and plate up. First, I'm gonna go ahead and grab some of this curry carrot puree. I want you to notice how beautiful that bright orange color is on those carrots. Now let's go ahead and plate our polenta cakes. A few of these asparagus cloves. Our butter poached lobster. I want you to notice how it really coats that lobster really well because it's emulsified. And this plate is ready to go. Now it's time for my family, my friends to sit down and enjoy this beautiful meal. Bon appetit, thank you, and see you next time.